Hi there, uh, Rob speaking. Uh, today I wanted to take some time uh, to talk to you about general management. Uh, because I think a lot of the time people misunderstand uh, what a, a general management uh, or a general manager uh, does with their time and what they should be doing with their time. Uh, and uh, I'd like to clarify exactly what a general manager should be doing. Now, what is, first of all, a general manager? Well, a general manager is uh, someone, uh, whichever type of industry is in, whether it be a service sector, whether it be in manufacturing, whether it be in distribution, whichever sector he's in, uh, him or her, I should say, uh, is in, uh, they're going to have uh, a team, uh, basically a multi-skilled multi -skilled team uh, working with them, uh, uh, to ensure that the business runs correctly. Now, the general manager, uh, from that point of view, what is the general manager? Why is he not a general manager? Well, uh, that might sound like a strange question. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll see why uh, I'm asking that question in a minute. Uh, well, uh, a general manager, if someone asked me, you know, what, what is a general manager? Why is he not? Uh, well, he's not got a magic wand. Um, well, what do you mean by that? It means that uh, when, when people come uh, with questions, uh, sometimes the general manager just can't answer, doesn't know the answer. And it's extremely important as a general manager to be able to say either you don't know uh, and, and point the person in the correct direction towards the person that will be able to give them an answer, or to tell them, for example, that you don't know, but that you will uh, get an answer for them uh, in the near future. If you do that, note it down and get the answer for the person. Or it might be that they're addressing themselves to the wrong person entirely and, and you, the general manager, would never have the answer to that question. So, uh, in fact, it's just about uh, people understanding, uh, and you especially, if you are a general manager, understanding, that you won't always have all the answers. And there's no shame at all in saying whatever level of management you're at, uh, by the way, uh, I don't know. I don't know. If you don't know, don't invent something, yeah? Uh, because if you do, it's going to be found out later on and then uh, confidence and trust will be straight out the window. Yeah? So that's the first thing that a general manager is not. He doesn't have, or he or she doesn't have uh, a magic wand. Secondly, um, they don't know everything. So that's connected with the first point. Uh, and this is why uh, in teams you generally have a number of experts. Uh, well, a very simple example, you know, if, if really a general manager knows how to take uh, a view uh, uh, to see basically the forest from the trees, what I mean by that is the global picture of how the uh, company is doing uh, and knows uh, how to manage people uh, to obtain uh, the results which are actually in line with the vision and mission of the organization. This doesn't mean that the manager or the general manager, it does not mean that he's going to always be uh, an expert in finance or an expert in marketing or an expert in HR. Uh, he will understand these areas, of course, but he will not be an expert. And if he was the expert in all of those areas, uh, you know, that'd be quite, a, quite an achievement. <laughs> but generally speaking, uh, the experts in those fields who are working with the general manager should know a lot more about the subject than he does, uh, he or she, once again, than they do, I'll, I'll just say, uh, in the future. So, if, uh, if the experts, and they should do, know more than you do, uh, then you should be listening to them attentively. And in actual fact, uh, your team of experts that surround you as a general manager, uh, one of the things that uh, actually they're there to do is to give you advice. Uh, and you should be listening to this advice so that you can take what we actually call informed decisions. Because uh, at the end of the day, uh, a lot of the decision making will be up to you as the general manager. Now, if you don't understand uh, what the expert has said to you, ask for clarification. There's no shame in that. Uh, ask for clarification. I didn't quite understand. Can you explain that to me again? And, uh, you know, there's no shame in that. Uh, but better to have understood and take a, a decision based uh, on information that you've understood rather than pretending to have understood and then taking exactly the wrong decision. Yeah? So, so uh, verifying uh, what people say to you and, and, and really 
uh, paying a, a lot of attention, be very attentive to the experts around you is, is very important indeed. Uh, so, in fact, uh, what else uh, as a general manager, what is he not? Well, he's not, uh, he doesn't, he's not omnipotent. He doesn't know uh, what's going to happen in the future. He can't see into the future. He has no crystal ball. Uh, uh, so when we're talking about vision, strategy and tactics, uh, how do you formulate as a general manager your, your, your tactics and your strategies? Well, obviously, uh, if you're the leader uh, in the organization, you need to be able to put forward some kind of vision and, uh, and the mission that you're there for. For example, if you say that you, uh, your product, uh, you want it to be the best quality product uh, compared to all the competitors and be known for that, but at a premium price, uh, you know, this is uh, the, your vision of things, yeah? And the mission is going to be uh, to, to put in place uh, marketing that will allow this to, to actually become a reality. Uh, so everyone is very, very heavily based on the marketing and how to market this product so that everyone understands that your brand has superior quality, but it's for a premium price. Um, that's all very well. But then you're going to have to uh, not just convince the customers, yeah? I mean, first of all, you're going to have to convince your team. Uh, and uh, as a general manager, you really your job is to ensure that this vision and mission can be broken down into what we can call uh, digestible parts, parts you can digest, which means uh, goals, so that everyone knows uh, what role they're playing in the vision and mission, and to ensure uh, that you're actually adhering to and uh, making sure that everything is adapted toward the vision and the mission, uh, and that there's nothing that's actually going sideways, so that everyone knows uh, basically which direction they have to take. You know, you often can be called the general manager, the director. There's a reason for that because they're there to give direction to the team, so that then the the finance uh, person will be telling you, okay, we have this amount of budget to do this uh, for the marketing. Marketing will be insisting what type of marketing we have to do. Do we have to concentrate on the internet? Do we have to concentrate on social media? Is it more about uh, search engine optimization on our website? Uh, the IT guy will be telling you, yeah, okay, we can do most of this and this is going to cost this much and we're going to have to do some Google ads and we're going to have to do this and we're going to have to improve uh, the speed of our website. We might have to improve our mobile application on, on website so it's faster, more efficient, more effective. Uh, so all of these things are, are going to be talked about, but you are not going to know all these things. Yeah? These people are going to, with your discussion and with your help, you will build a strategy with your people. This is what's important about being a general manager. You're not on your own. No man is an island or woman. You're not on your own. So you have to understand uh, that these people are there to help. Uh, and uh, and treat them as such and treat them as the experts that they are. Uh, now, your job, obviously, is to ensure that all these people can work together properly. Um, it's not always the case in teams, of course, that people uh, all love each other. Uh, they're not married, after all. Um, but they do have to be able to work with one another uh, in, in order to achieve what I would like to call common goals. Uh, now, common goals are, are things like the quality of the product, uh, the pricing of, of the product, uh, the way people, uh, you know, are, are, what, what profit level the organization is aiming at, that's a common goal for everyone, you know. So so the director of finance will maybe have more uh, to do with financial ratios and so forth. The HR, maybe they'll have more objectives to do with turnover and, and reducing turnover and staff uh, and that sort of thing and, and ensuring the correct training and so forth. But at the end of the day, uh, the, all of the people that are in your teams from marketing, from HR, from finance have to be aiming at the same goal and the same goal will be the success of the organization um, from a financial standpoint and probably from a social standpoint too. So I reckon that this is, uh, in terms of general management, this is, uh, these are all really good lessons to learn. Uh, but coming back to the same thing, and I, I don't really, it doesn't matter about repeating this, uh, you can't repeat this often enough. You don't know everything. You can't know everything. It's one of the most common mistakes of young managers that they make 
is trying to know absolutely everything. Well, you can try and do that and try and work in place of your experts, but then you're in the domain of micromanagement. Yeah? If you're constantly going uh, to check over the work of uh, your finance director, oh, show me the p &L again, I wasn't sure about this line and that line, and instead of taking a global view and having some KPIs that really are important, for example, just to ask you know, the, the basic questions, you know, are we in a profitable situation? How is cash flow? Uh, you know, how, how are we doing in terms of cash flow? Do we have enough cash? Is there, is there no problem with that? Working capital? Ask these questions, yeah. But don't go line by line through the thing with them every single time, yeah? You may do that in his one-to-one -one or her, her one-to-one. -one, but you're not there to do that all the time. Because if you do that, then you're trying to manage in their place. And that's not what good management does. Yeah. So anyway, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this uh, this brief uh, brief video today. In any case, if you have any remarks, comments, please feel free to leave them, uh, and I'll see you again for more on management and leadership in the very near future. Thank you very much for your time.